Good morning, everybody. This is Jay Fidel here on Think Tech. We have Community Matters, and more specifically, we have Jane Sawyer of the SBA because we like to check in with the SBA every now and then and find out how things are going. If you didn't realize that the SBA is central in our recovery, uh, our reopening, uh, and all the programs, uh, the care, the CARES Act, for example, a good part of that is administered through the SBA. So we want to know how things are going as, as the reopening takes place. Although there's a real question, I might add, that if you read the morning paper, we're now in a number of states, we're in what they call the pause. The pause is, <laughs> is where you pause the reopening. I mean, we're gonna have various various chapters on this book. Good morning, Jane, so nice to see your smiling face. Oh, good morning, Jay, it's great to see you too. Thanks for inviting SBA along and hearing a little bit about this uh, Here's Act's journey and the PPP and the IDLE and all of those other great acronyms. Last time we spoke, you were, you were being deluged with applications for PPP and PPP money coming in. And that was what, about several weeks ago, I guess, uh, yes. six weeks ago, maybe. And I'd like to uh, you know, take up where we left off and get an update so people know what the SBA is doing and how <laughs> these programs are doing, okay? Uh, well, you know, it's uh, these programs have been just like the COVID-19 pandemic itself, very uncertain, changing every day, sometimes multiple times within a day. But the important factor is that we're trying to get money out to help small businesses and help those employees who aren't working, who've been furloughed, who've been laid off, businesses that are on the brink of closing because there are no customers um, or the government has shut them down. So CARES Act put a lot of money out there and SBA together with Department of Treasury was charged in following the intention of Congress and getting the money out to small business. The biggest program is the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program loan that goes out to small businesses, um, nonprofits, um, all who have been impacted by uh, this pandemic and unable to continue to do business or they the customers or the employees had to go home. PPP particularly, and this is important distinction, PPP was designed to help keep employees on the payroll in pay status uh, and keep businesses open. So that's, it's a quick turnaround loan um, made through the banks, 100% um, guaranteed by SBA, the federal government, um, with a forgiveness phase um, if you use the money as intended. Initially it came out and it was 75% of the proceeds of the loan go to payroll, the other 25% could be used for some of your fixed costs that you weren't able to pay, such as rent, mortgage interest, utilities, things along that line. So it wouldn't replace revenue, but it would help you keep the lights on and the doors open, employees paid. So can you give us some metrics about how many applications have been received and processed uh, in Hawaii and how much money has passed hands to the people, you know, who are the beneficiaries of the program? Um, since this program didn't, you know, you had to be eligible uh, as a small business, meaning that you had to be in business by February 15th um, of this year, you had to be operating, you had to have payroll. Um, you also had to have under 500 employees who reside in the United States. So it is for US businesses. We, I can't tell you how many applied, but I think probably if the applications went through all of our local banks and many of the credit unions were participating and also many fintechs were involved in this program this year. Mm -hmm. We have made, uh, as of last week, 11,657 loans in Hawaii for over 675, 661, 400 loans um, to small businesses for their payroll. The loan program will remain open and there is continuous money. If you remember, a lot of drama, a lot of fast moving action when this program launched on April 3rd, April 2nd, April 3rd, after Congress approved the act. It took about a week for SBA and the Treasury to cobble uh, the requirements together and get the first applications out to the banks. Um, our banks in Hawaii were very, very responsive. And even in that first tranche, it lasted about two weeks and SBA loaned all the money uh, at that time. Um, which was like $350 billion went out across the country. 
So we got a good portion of that to Hawaii. Second round came out, some of the changes to make the act more flexible because any kind of business can, any small business can apply for this. And you can also be a sole proprietor. You can be an independent contractor, uh, LLC. Um, and as I said, a 501c3 uh, not-for-profit agency can apply for these loans as well. So we've seen a lot of, um, you know, Aloha United Way, Hawaii Theater, Hawaii mm -hmm. Symphony, Iolani mm -hmm. Palace, mm -hmm. um, all of these organizations have um, applied and been awarded PPP loans. Hmm. That raises an interesting question. There's been some discussion in the national press about where the CARES money has gone. Um, it's, it's not clear where some of the you know, big uh, amounts have gone, um, mm -hmm. and that may be subject to Freedom of Information information act later but um is is it public who is getting the money um since there's been so much just in you know involved in making the loans and getting the things together we don't have a great database to say start disclosing who's gotten the money it's not like we're hiding it it's just managing this massive amount of data at the same time we're really focused on getting the money out um, initially, there was a lot of publicity about some publicly traded companies, for example, who had applied. Again, this criteria is very, very broad, and it's up to primarily the, the borrower to make the a forthright and good faith certification that their business is, number one, eligible based on the size standard and the type of business that they are, that their employees are in the United States, that they also need the money um, so they don't have other available assets that will sustain their business through the time, the term of the pandemic, which at that time we were thinking would probably be closures of about three weeks. Now we're beyond three months or about three months and going beyond that. Particularly knows, yeah, yeah. If we're in a pause or, you know, um, you know, a rebound uh, and things like that, the uh, businesses may close again. This is just unprecedented nobody saw this coming and nobody thought we were as ill prepared as perhaps we have been across the country and across the globe so uh, that's that's made it very very hard and so some of those larger companies i mean some of the notorious ones we heard about were like the los angeles lakers um and we have seen uh, many companies that um feel that since they meet that 500 employee standard um, they should be, and they're a business with employees in the United States, they should be allowed to apply. But then again, they have to um, meet an, about eight or nine different certifications as part of uh, their um, loan, loan documentation. Uh, the, this will also go, so if they've gotten a, a loan, they have to then move ahead to use the proceeds as prescribed by the loan or employee payroll, including those costs. And initially, as I said, 75%. A recent uh, Flexibility Act that was passed the first week of June now changes that 75-25 to 60-40 and extends the period that you, the covered period when you can use those loan proceeds from eight weeks to 24 weeks. So almost to the end of the year um, mm -hmm. for many businesses. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing some complications come through as people are, as small business owners are spending that money and then they get to apply for forgiveness because either all of that loan or a portion of that loan can be forgiven at, by the government and will be paid to the bank so that the small business owner isn't carrying any debt. So that's the next step. So even though we'll accept the last, the last loan, a clay, application will go through next week, June 30th, 1159 p.m., then the system shuts down, unless Congress changes things again. But we're not, we're not looking at that right now. We think that we'll play out this first phase, shut it down, and assess, because there is about $120, $25 billion, $125, $128 billion left in that loan fund. So if there are any businesses out there small businesses, sole proprietorship, innovative businesses. You know, if you've been in business since February, um, you look back at your payroll, go to sba.gov, click on the yellow banner at the top, get the details, get the application, send it in. 
And again, right now, um, because that money's available, see if you can get approved for a loan. Um, and then it is, you know, making good use of the loan over the next up to 24 weeks. Mm, so, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I mean, there are, I'm sure there are people out there that uh, would benefit by hearing it. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in many cases, because there was such a rush, our banks were swamped. We've made more loans in the last three months than we have made in the entire 28 years I've been with SBA, and particularly local banks. One of the local banks that is one of our leading lenders makes about 100 loans a year. Um, they've made over 6,000 loans in three months. So this is a lot of money to move out, a lot of loan paperwork to take care of, and a lot of rules to follow. So we're moving into the next phase. If you haven't gotten a loan from one of those banks or they didn't get to process your application, I would say take a look at maybe some of the fintechs because if you aren't a customer with one of the banks, they may not consider your loan or it may not be a sizable loan. So the fintechs are still processing Cabbage, PayPal, um, many of those. You can just Google PPP loans and uh, see who's making those. Then just carefully follow the instructions. Do so before June 30th because you have to have the, the um, lender has to approve your loan. SBA has to stamp it and give it an approved loan number before 11.59 p.m. on June 30th. That's coming up very quickly. That's like a week away. Ooh. Yeah, it's just under a week away. So is it's it very possible? quick now. Is it possible to get all that done in a week, you think? Well, we've, we've heard um, anecdotally and in some um, uh, magazine reports and things that they're processing, the fintechs are going through the loans and giving you approval in 48 hours. So um, it is, you need to have some of your documentation available. A small business owner has to determine what his monthly payroll is. And the application form will tell you how to calculate that correctly for purposes of the PPP loan. Then you multiply that by two and a half times and that will give you what your um, possible or likely loan amount should be. Mm -hmm. um, it will cover payroll for employees, including the owner, whatever you've paid yourself, depending on what schedule you use to pay taxes, because that will be your look back and you determine what your monthly take is, you can add other payroll costs for employees. So things like um, if you, your, their healthcare costs, um, their, uh, you know, leave payments and things along that line, you can, state taxes can also be factored in there with payroll costs, two and a half times that, and that's the number that you get. And again, 60% of your pro loan proceeds go to meet payroll over the covered period, which follows the disbursement of the loan so that you can get some money to your employees, get them back and help you get ready to open up. That deep cleaning that you might need to do, installing the barriers, putting yes. up signage, those kind of things. Yes. Get ready to open up or open up and uh, get your employees off uh, unemployment and back in uh, on the payroll. Yes. So um, does, does the word employee include independent contractors? Does it include gig independent workers? Independent contractors should probably, should, won't be included there by the business that pays that independent contractor. An independent contractor should apply on their own. Ah, okay. So since so, they would file their taxes on their own and things like that. Can you give us a sort of a list of the things you have to do for forgiveness and by when? Okay, forgiveness is basically a documentation of um, how you have spent the proceeds of the loan. So as you make payroll, you would keep, you know, copies of the checks if that or the ACH transfers, if that's how you make your payroll, any calculations of those costs. Uh, if you use a PPO, for example, we're getting way too many of these PPO, PPP, PPE. <laughs> um, but if you use someone who helps do your payroll, you can use their report um, to substantiate and support that you paid those employees. Um, it has to be for that covered term, and you have to keep most of those employees on your payroll. So if, if in February you had 10 employees, you should be showing that you had 10 employees and that if you had to reduce their payroll costs to, say, extend the time that or you know, the type of work they're doing. They don't have to be doing exactly the same duties. 
They don't have to be in the business, but they have to be paid and they have to be considered um, your employee and on your payroll. So you have to show that you paid them at least 75% of the pay that they were getting before. You have to get back up to the number of employees. There are a lot of specific rules and they're again, fast changing June 5th, June 6th, 17th, June 24th. We just had some new interim final rules. Again, you can find those all at sba.gov or at the treasury we website under the COVID-19 response. Uh, and it's extensive, it's hard to, keep up. I think there are about 16 uh, I, IFRs now. So, mm -hmm. um, and just changing the rules, but to certify after you finished your, after the employer has finished their uh, covered period, whether it's the first eight weeks or they've decided to extend to the 24 and they've exhausted their funds, they gather all the data to complete a form, an application form that goes to their lender. The lender will check their calculations um, see uh, that they've certified on the form. It's usually, um, they just redid the forms and there is a easy form, just like think, think 1040, think your tax forms. They're very, very similar. There are a couple of worksheets that are involved to help you get to the numbers you actually plug into your form. The bank can ask you for some of those documents or that certification and you will send it all to the bank. They'll take a look at it. And they have a period of time, I think they have 60 days to review your, your um, application for forgiveness to determine, I mean, even if you work on this loan, you don't have to make a payment on the loan for at least a year. So it's not happening right away. Um, you will have some interest accruing um, on the loan. Uh, and then you have a two, from the time that you've taken the loan, you have a two year term to repay the loan at a, uh, very, very low interest rate. Um, and I'm trying to remember if they've changed that now or, or um, but it's, it's a very, very low interest rate. It's gone right now from my <laughs> mind, but uh, you know, the critical factors are starting to slip away as we've gone through this. Um, well, yeah, it changes and it's, uh, it's, everything is immediate and you're, you're on a, a, a speedboat journey over here. So yeah. our question is that, uh, you, you, in other words, there's a calculation of the forgiveness. It's yes. not all or nothing. No, it's uh, not all or nothing. How, to the extent you comply with these requirements, then you get a calculation based on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah. what about SBA itself? I mean, you, you started off, you had no idea that Congress was going to do this. And as you said, in 28 years, you haven't seen any kind of volume, anything <laughs> close to this. So query, what, what did you do in your office? Did you hire extra people? Uh, did you, uh, you know, uh, and, and at the same time, there's the office threat, right? There's a yes. threat of COVID for your staff and you want to protect mm -hmm. them. So how did you reorganize yourself in order to deal with uh, 11,000 transactions in a, a very short period of time? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is like every other business in Hawaii, um, we had uh, the challenge of um, remain how we remained open. So we did do most of our work remotely and this program isn't the only one that we're running simultaneously. So we continue to do uh, and meet the compliance requirements of our government contracting programs, which include the 8A program. Uh, that added a few new factors too, because a lot of the government contracts were also shut down because facilities were closed. So we had to deal not only with 8A annual reviews, but temporary suspensions um, because it's a time sensitive program. So my um, business opportunity specialists um, were also working remotely from home. So we had a, a very core staff in the office because particularly with this program, we were considered essential business, but most of the staff worked from home. We did um, keep the lights on, but the doors were locked. We have had a tremendous number of calls and the rest of my team or all of my team was actively involved in servicing phone calls, customers who didn't know what to do, customers who were dealing with problems. SBA also was making all the loan payments. We had debt relief going on for those ongoing customers who have regular SBA 7A and 504 loans. So those loans, because of the CARES Act, were also being paid by SBA to the banks. So any of our, our lenders who were servicing or collecting on an SBA portfolio from the last two to three years 
was processing payments, incoming payments from the SBA to cover those borrowers. Mm -hmm. um, what, they were what? also still potentially closing deals even though a very, very small number of deals going forward because they were all having adverse impacts from this pandemic as well. What but we I get, what I get out of this is that your staff was still available and is still available to answer questions. So you described these forms uh, that had to be filled out both, both for the loan and uh, or for the forgiveness later. And mm -hmm. uh, am I right to say that SBA will help people who have questions about these forms and, and how they go through the process? Am I right about that? Yes, yes. The, we, we have staff on and we're training the lenders on this program because obviously um, this PPP loan program defied anything that we've ever asked any lender to do um, because you just throw all your credit principles out the window. We aren't checking credit. We aren't checking assets. We, we are verifying um, that they are in business or asking the borrower to attest to that. But the, the bank didn't have to evaluate, well, they had to look at proposals, but not with the care and credit analysis that they would normally do. Right. So it was very, very different from them. And they went on double shifts mm. to meet that demand and get well, those loans This takes processed. me to my next question, which mm -hmm. is, um, you know, there has to be uh, problems in a program of this size. We're talking about trillions. Yes. Uh, and there have to be uh, scammers out there. Yeah. People who step in and t t false identity and and try to get the you know the money improperly and criminally wrong, uh, and there have to be bureaucrats in Washington, whatever agencies are involved <laughs> in, in in making rules that don't work, uh, in processing whatever they need to process too slowly at a time when everything is is emergency. And I wonder if you could comment to the extent you can comment on that. If you can tell us the, the dark side of this, there had to be holdups and there had to be scammers and there had to be problems. What, what were they? I think that we're still, we're still seeing some of that because yes, when you see a program that is as broad as this and is meant to help as many people as possible, there are gonna be some of those bad players who are, are going to um, push the rules or, or try and get through. We have had um, some investigations. Some have been very, very obvious. Uh, people that are not eligible um, applying for the loans and actually getting funded and uh, accepting payments. So there are some checks and balances along the way. We've had reports and they are sent to the inspector general's office at SBA for further investigation. If there's something that comes to our attention, we're notifying people, um, people in the community who see um, something that they feel is not correct, are notifying the agency. Um, there have been arrests made. There have been people who have, uh, as they become aware, you know, um, because the burden is going to ultimately be on the borrower and the SBA and the treasury have determined how they're going to look back at these loans um, because some of them are quite large. So they are evaluating and examining both the eligibility and the certifications that come in from the borrowers. So there will be, um, as, as the, uh, both in the loan making process, they're evaluating eligibility, particularly with the larger um, loans, um, 2 million and over. Um, there will be check boxes on the certification forms that will automatically send those forms into, or those requests in for an audit. Um, we get irregularities that are reported by the banks that receive those applications. Thankfully, um, they are paying attention and they want to be correct because they don't want to have a loan application whose um, either their guarantee or their forgiveness is denied and they might not be getting the reimbursement. Because the loan, the bank is lending their money. We then on evaluation are um, paying them uh, either on the guarantee or for the forgiveness as the loan is processed. So uh, it goes through several stages because anything that's not forgiven uh, in a loan for an individual borrower turns, turns into a loan that the bank then has to process for the remainder of the two-year term. So Jane, looking forward, let's, let's take a snapshot if we can. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to look forward in a time where everything is changing, but uh, looking forward, uh, let me see if I understand the parameters here. 
um, okay, on the on the thirtieth of this month, mm -hmm. application. That's the last application. So mm -hmm. after that, no more applications under the current uh, arrangement. Okay, but there's still money. There's, there's several hundred. What did you say? Six hundred billion dollars that haven't been spent under this program. Well, that's 128 billion right now. Sorry, so 128 I, I think that the billion. The total amount has been 600 billion, but the 128. Um, I think some because of some of these uncertainties, people don't know which way to go. PPP. So why or why the other cut one. it? Why cut it off on June 30 if there's 128 billion left that hasn't been uh, hasn't been processed, hasn't been uh, spent um, under the program? Why, why not extend the deadline? Do you think they will? Um, I'm not sure they're going to extend the deadline um, right away. They're talk about doing a couple of different things, and it may be um, redirecting the loans um, to, say, underserved sectors or perhaps those that are hurting the most. They did make some special considerations for some of the smaller businesses. There have been some special considerations for ag-related business. There have been some different um, considerations for the... Uh, lodging, hospitality, um, restaurants that have been unable to open uh, across the country. So it could be that there will be, that money will be set aside or moved to a different program. Um, they kind of may take a break and do a short reset to see when is the country traveling again and what can we do to, to, to support uh, tourist related businesses because they've been shut down the longest. You know, so we, we have various issues that are going to come up. For example, yes. we were talking before the show about the pause. Now they call it the pause uh, in California, Texas, uh, uh, one other state, uh, I can't remember, Florida, mm -hmm. um, and maybe others uh, to follow. So if you have a spike, and they do in those states, then the governors um, are considering pauses in the reopening. Okay? This means that a, a, a business that has had PPP money um, maybe under pressure, uh, it may be locked down again. It may, yes. may not be able to do business again. And that affects the, the forgiveness, I think, at least mm -hmm. the calculation of the forgiveness. Of, also, I remember that uh, the original amount of money in total was uh, 2.3 trillion. And then there was a second bill a, a couple of weeks later for mm -hmm. uh, another several hundred million, billion dollars. After a while, it gets to be real money. Uh, and, <laughs> and <laughs> so the total is something like uh, three trillion dollars right now, mm -hmm. uh, and they, they stopped there. They haven't been able to agree on a, on a further tranche beyond the three trillion. Uh, so the question is, what do you see going forward? Because we're not we everybody agrees we're not out of the woods. Uh, there may be a pause that will you know confuse and complicate things. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any idea of what's going to happen if we have a pause and if we go into you know, a, a kind of combination of resurgence and pause, resurgence and, and pause, ripple effect, mm -hmm. uh, economic process going forward. Well, do you have any idea what's going to happen? What's going to happen to this program? Um, I, I think it could be um, reimagined a little bit. I think we will have a pause for the program uh, where they decide if they should break up the chunk of money to some specialized uses or transfer it to another program. For small businesses, even after June 30th, we still have available the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program that's administered by SBA as well. And they have that portal is open. That, that loan program can fund force eligible small businesses more um, working capital needs. So it has broader uses. So you could pay vendors, you can still, now you're in a different term, you could still pay, meet payroll, you can pay rent. Um, you know, things along that line that could help you during the reopening of your business as well, because it helps you meet the costs that you are unable to pay because of the, the loss in revenues due to the pandemic. That program is still available. Some of that 128 billion could be transferred there to help us be able to meet more of those needs. Um, some of the money from PPP could be redirected. There are also programs that small businesses can, can um, apply for with the Department of Labor, with the Department of Taxation, um, state and federal, that will also help them in other areas. So it's great to go out and talk to or get on one of the webinars with SBA. We'll be doing a lot on recovery coming up. So go to sba.gov backslash HI to find out about those programs. 
or call our office. Somebody will call you back eventually when uh, we pass all those calls along to those remote workers. Um, and we did get a little bit of extra help at the office because we know that now a lot of it's time to put the big boots on um, because a lot of the work starts now as we get the money out from this program. But SBA is ready to help. Dana, I know you, you would derive a certain amount of gratification from helping the business community. That's so for all the years, all the years I know you. Um, but, but now this is special and uh, you must have a, a certain special amount of gratification going forward that you are central in the reopening and central in saving, restoring our economy. I mean, how do you feel about your job these days? Do you like your work? <laughs> Most often, Jay, I love my work, um, uh, particularly when we can really be um, getting something done for small business. So I think I, I'm hoping that I'm going to feel very, very gratified when we get through this, but it's going to take us a while to see the real results. I'm really pleased that we could work with the, with so many lenders to get the money out and they did an extraordinary job. I'm just so thankful for them that uh, they stepped up um, Central Pacific Bank, um, American Savings Bank, First Hawaiian, Hawaii National, Bank of Hawaii, some of the smaller credit unions, they just did a great job doubling up shifts, getting their loan officers, you know, uh, into the banks, working um, around the clock virtually. So I couldn't get my people to do that, but they did do some really long hours <laughs> and we really uh, kind of, you know, particularly when so much is unknown, it's sometimes hard to, to uh, reach out, but everybody really dug in to try and work together. And that's still, we still have a ways to go. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Jane Sawyer, SBA. And if you want to know more, it's sba.gov. Thank you so much, Jane, for showing. Thank you, Jane. You show. take care. Take care. Stay safe. Aloha.